cannabis and sex. What does the science say? What do you say? I would love to hear your anecdotes about this. I will start with the research and end with the juicy historical anecdotes and recipes. I'm Lex Felger. I do can education for CV Sciences, the makers of Plus CBD, and we might be working on intimacy products. I wish we would talk about sex more normally like we do about other subjects. For instance, if I was to tell you that my father reported a few months of CBD-rich hemp extracts gave him better and more erections, you might say, why are you telling this to me, a stranger at a cocktail party? But my father would say, at his age, this is a piece of data of note. On a related note, my friend Shelley Winninger reported that menopause completely decimated her libido and nothing was bringing it back until she figured out that two shots of vodka or two tokes would do it. But she was on Weight Watchers. She didn't want the calories of vodka. And uh, the two tokes was absolutely perfect. She said it was a fucking miracle and made her multi, multi, multi orgasmic. So I would love to hear your stories in the comments about how cannabis affects your sex because the research is all over the place. The general, general trend of the data is that for males, cannabis can make it harder to achieve an erection, though they might enjoy the sex more if they can do it. And for females, that it tends to open them up on a variety of sexual measures, including number of orgasms. Unfortunately, I've never seen any data about queer people or trans people, except for the fact that they tend to use cannabis more and that they tend to have more orgasms in general. Much more data exists on the female side of things. Here is the best review paper I know, and here's the most recent survey pointing to increased sexual satisfaction among women using cannabis, but there's been four or five surveys with similar results that I've seen. Here's another well done review, and it points out something very important. There can be biphasic effects, as in a little bit of cannabis helps, but too much does not help. And you can imagine what would be happening there. And here's an excellent piece of research I wanted to highlight simply because it looks at the effects of THC on a range of sexual behaviors in rats. And they found that overall it increases proceptivity, which is a series of behaviors ranging from courtship to copulation itself. On the male side, here's the two best review papers from the last few years. This one is especially good because it also looks at surveys and internet postings, and it talks about how there are negative effects on semen parameters, as well as a number of men reporting trouble maintaining an erection because of cannabis use. It also can change hormone levels as well. And so I think the effects on males are much more variable, and the science isn't nearly as well developed. For a more wide-ranging examination of what happens in the real world, The Sexual Power of Marijuana by Barbara Lewis from 1970 is a great look, and it's a free PDF online. Also, if you want to explore on the poetry side, Lenore Kandel's The Potbird in this excellent Sisters Extreme female drug writers is a great piece of work. And of course, there is a widespread use of cannabis for sex throughout human history. In the Tantric traditions, we have good evidence of it being used as a sexual aid to enlightenment since the 7th century. In Egypt, they have a hashish confection called crocodile's penis. Uh, in Poland, the strongest aphrodisiac is a porridge made out of hemp seeds. And in Tashkent, when you're getting deflowered for the first time, they mix in hemp with lamb's flat fat for the pain. And let's end with a quote from the high priest, Timothy Leary. It's true that marijuana is a fantastically effective aphrodisiac, and the person who understands pot can weave together a symphony of visual, auditory, olfactory, gustatory, and tactual sensitivity to make lovemaking an adventure which dwarfs the imagination of the pornographer.